Live at the NBC affiliate here, and we're thrilled that you guys are shooting something in Atlanta. This is Atlanta. You have ties to Atlanta. Could you kind of kick us off by telling us what the ties to Atlanta are? And uh, and also, because I know I'm asked this one, this one question, but it's what the ties to Atlanta are and just the difference of Hollywood shooting versus Atlanta, and you're thrilled to have it here. Okay. Um, I came to Atlanta back when I was 19, so that was 2008, late 2008. Okay. I came here, and um, before any of this, you know, took off, I was a barber. I've been cutting hair since I was 10 years old. So um, I started here uh, at 19 working on MLK um, at a barbershop called Philly's Finest. And that was kind of where I developed Breezy. I mean, I knew who I was all along, but Atlanta really was the, the, the place that, you know, catapulted me into being just, you know, star-like. You know what I mean? I made all my connections here. I wasn't a person's hair that I didn't cut in the city. You know what I'm saying? So most people know me by that first, and they didn't see me in TV in their life. You know, thanks. So um, I, I transitioned to L.A. maybe four years ago, and um, I was there doing the same thing, cutting hair, working on my music, and uh, got the call one day about, you know, an audition for Empire. So that stuff literally happened in a matter of 72 hours. So to go from, you know, just being a barber and an aspiring artist, I kind of immediately, you know, shot to the top. So uh, to get into that, um, Getting on a production set, I actually filmed in Chicago first. Um, you know, Empire is a very prestige company. I mean, it's Fox, you know, so big money, big budget, you know, everything is like very top notch. So uh, I spent most of my time shooting there. I have shot in LA, but to come to Atlanta, it feels more home. It feels more like home. It's like it's comfy. I know where to eat. I know, you know, the, the vibe is just totally different. But uh, Hollywood is a little bit more. Uh, I don't know. I'm not just, uh, bougie. Uh, it's not. It's not bougie, but it's just different. I mean, because Atlanta. I mean, look at everybody in this room. This is an African American city. You know what I'm saying? Like we make Atlanta. This is this is this is a place where we know we can come. We can start from the ground up. We can rise to the top. And you know, we're just so unified in this city. And LA is not the same way. You know what I mean? It's so to a, to an extent, it is clickish because you have those who already had it and you know oh you're not cute enough or no you don't have enough talent or you can't do this but atlanta's not one of them places so to see that film you know television music everything kind of coming back to atlanta i think is the greatest thing because there's been so much potential in this city all, all along so now it's forcing people here and you gotta come you know what i mean so i'm happy to be here i'm happy that you know swear was choosing to you know just be one of the you know, major production companies here in the city. So, glad to be working with that. So, Breezy, tell us a little bit about your character, Denise. Denise is a hothead. I mean, she, she is, she's young, for one. I mean, as any young woman would, you know, finding your way in the world is tough. And giving her upbringing of, you know, rape, and she's HIV positive, and her parents were murdered. You know, it's just, it's not the easiest beginning. You know what I mean? So, honestly, I think when people you know, come from such horrific backgrounds, it, it's hard to actually see a clear vision or even feel like I could be great someday. You know what I'm saying? And I think Denise just does not have that thought. She just doesn't. I mean, it, like, what, what's, what else, what more can happen besides me dying? Like, I've been through hell and back, and I'm still here, still going through hell. You know what I'm saying? So I think she's just, you know, she's, I think, you know, deep down, I mean, I'm, I'm sure she wishes for something better, but she's just, you know, she's someone who's ex uh, absolutely adapted to her circumstances and just lives by it. Next question. Right. Breezy. I'm Harmony from Love from Pop Life Radio. And my question is, how, what kind of headspace do you have to be in? Do you do anything special to be prepared to play a criminal or somebody with HIV that is HIV positive? What do you do? Uh, with me, honestly, I think to get into character, uh, you have to be understanding. And I think with me, I just understand life. I understand circumstance, and I definitely understand reality. So I'm never, you know, whether I've been raped or I haven't been raped, I'm still a woman. I still know what hurt feels like, you know what I'm saying? And I'm sure there's, there's different levels to pain, but I mean, pain is pain, abuse is abuse. So I'm just able to, and then the, the idea to have to get it by any means, I know what that feels like. So who's to say what you're gonna do to get it, but we've all been in that position, you know what I'm saying? Where it's crunch time, we gotta figure it out. Now, some of those moments that we, you know, do certain things, may cost us our life, may not, you know what I'm saying? So, I mean, to each his own, but to me, I just, you know, like I said, I just put myself like, what if this was me? What am I, what would I do? And, and because I've been there, I don't come from a glorious background. I don't come from a horrific one either, 
but I ha I, I'm in a happy medium, and I have friends, and I, I, I'm such a, a emotional, you know, vibrational person, so if she went through it, and this is my best friend, I went through it. And if he went through it, I went through it too, so I'm able to just relate off the muscle, like. So I just, you know, I put myself in his shoes and really just think like that. And I actually, with Denise's situation, is so crazy because as I was reading the script, um, I have a friend who's been in that situation. So I cried reading the script because I'm literally within 10 feet of my friend who I'm talking about. You know what I'm saying? So I've heard her stories, and I understand her life as a grown woman now. You know what I mean? So it's very effective, the things you go through. So with doing this uh, role was just like, dang. You know what I mean? It was pretty emotional, sad story. She Magazine. So we've seen you um, somewhat in action scenes um, in Empire mm -hmm. and your other works. Um, is there anything particular about this character that you can kind of relate to your character on Empire and any main differences? Um, I just think overall, you know, Frida Gats of Empire and Denise um, Brown, they, they, they're semi-similar. Mm -hmm. I mean, because again, we still have this story of the young girl finding her way. We still have it, you know what I mean? And, and we, us women, we've all been through that, you know what I'm saying? And everybody's uh, road traveled is going to be different, but mm -hmm. we all have the trial and the tribulation of that. We have to figure it out. You know what I'm saying? We all, we battle our femininity, our masculinity. You know what I'm saying? And and we try to solidify our position in this world. You know what I'm saying? So I think that both of those characters did the same thing. Um, I, 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 I mean, they could just as well be identical in, yeah. in, in you know, <laughs> shooting for the same star. You yeah. know what I mean? But I think the end goal is to just get out. Right. To just get out, get away, you know what I'm saying? And I think they want better, but, you know, some people just, they got to deal with what they got to deal with. And how is that, like, playing a, a woman that, when people meet her, they're like, she's so tough, but underneath is these, she's tough because there's these layers of pain underneath her. You said, how is it? Yeah, like, you know, what you're talking about, like, with Frida and I imagine Denise, like, mm -hmm. people that initially meet them, they think that they're strong. Right. I mean, I, I think that with characters like that, with people like that who have, you know, had, you know, some pretty tough backgrounds or upbringings, I think that, you know, the, the one thing missing overall is the love and the tension. That's missing from the door because I think neglect is what fuels that. You know what I'm saying? And the idea or the action of people showing you that they don't care. So in order to get through that, you have to almost, you have to massage it. You have to massage that person in order to, you know, penetrate. You know, you can't just walk up thinking that she's going to be whoever you think she is in the inside. You know what I'm saying? Because you're right, she does have this layer of whatever. Denise had been raped repeatedly. She had been abused. I mean, now she's infected with a disease that she's going to live with for the rest of her life. Her parents were murdered in front of her. She has to live with that for the rest of her life. You know what I'm saying? So it takes time. It takes attention. You know, it takes a special touch to really, you know, get through to a person like that. And I think that there's a lot of young women out here like that. I used to be like that. You know what I'm saying? But it takes time. And you can identify when a person cares and when they don't. You know what I'm saying? But most of the time, uh, a woman in that position, she's never seen it. So she doesn't know what it looks like. My heart. So how do you feel going from barbering, your music, to empire, to this? How did you feel when you heard you got selected for this position? How this part? About the role, Denise. Uh -huh. uh, to get this role, um, playing Denise Brown, for me, was just, it was amazing. Because I think that overall, the work that I do is so influential to young women. And, and I think for me, my purpose is bigger than what the cameras capture or what the, you know, people hear or whatever. It, it's, it's, a, it's to guide. In some sort of way, it's to guide. And all of these stories that I'm able to just jump into are very relevant. And, right. and these, are, these are things that in entertainment aren't really touched on. Right. They're not. People don't shed the spotlight on that girl. Right. They don't. You know what I'm saying? And there is... You know, I do a lot of public speaking in children's homes and things like that because I know what's missing. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And, and and if I could give it to you, then that's what I'm going to do. So I love, I will play these roles over and over and over until we see change in the way our women are brought up. Right. And that's what's most important to me. I have little sisters. I have nieces. You know what I'm saying? And, and this is important because it starts 
at that age. You know what I'm saying? Right. Like I said, if they don't know it, they don't feel it, they don't understand it, they'll never be able to identify it. You know, and people could say what they want about women who choose prostitution or, you know, choose drugs or alcohol or any vice like that, but they don't know. Right. You know what I'm saying? And everybody's so damn busy, nobody has the time to sit down and figure it out. Right. You know what I'm saying? Because they immediately look at it as if it's a brick wall. When it's really not. Yeah. It's just a curtain that you just got pulled back. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. So I think for me, uh, again, this role was just, like I said, I get emotional and I get so tied into it because I know what my purpose is in playing it. Right. You know what I'm saying? And I just hope that somebody could see it and be like, damn, you know what I'm saying? There's, a, you know, uh, I had friends who had, you know, diseases such as HIV growing up. You know what I'm saying? What do you do? What do you tell that girl? Right. You know what I'm saying? She mm -hmm. can't have a boyfriend. You know what I mean? You know how society is today. It's just messed up. You right. know what I'm saying? So I just feel like, you know, the writers and directors of today's world, you know, they're starting to open their minds a lot more. It's starting to be, the content is becoming very much realistic. You know what I mean? And we're able to really identify with it. Given your Thank musical you. background, do you have any input into the score for the film? Um, on, uh... Some, some, well, with, it depends on what the role is, honestly. You know what I'm saying? And sometimes I don't even want to take that approach, you know, because it's, it's, it's a lot to do both. If I, just, if I come on to your job and say, right. I'm going to do the character and I'm going to do TV, you're looking at a dead woman walking. I ain't going to be yeah. able to sleep. You know what I'm saying? It's just so much <laughs> that goes into that. You're looking at a 16, 18-hour shooting day. Right. When are we going to do music? When are we going to get some sleep? When are we going to eat? You know what I'm saying? So um, <laughs> there's times when I can. There's times when I can, you right. know, but... Uh,